Either the debt market has it wrong or the stock market has it wrong. Now, with that out of the way, I'm going to pass it right back over to you, Kelly. And uh, please give us an, an update on, on the markets the past couple of weeks. All right. Well, again, hello, everybody. I'm Kelly Korshak, um, the uh, Chief Investment Officer of Flip Financial or iFlip Investor. We're going to start today and create kind of a more of a, a, a constant format for everybody. I want everybody to know that most things in this world are driven by interest rates. So that is where we will begin. Um, I'm assuming everybody can see the chart up there. It might be a little bit um, ungranular. However, what it is, is that um, a one month, every one of those little bars there represent it, one month of the price of the US Treasury bonds. So just to make sure you understand, we're looking at a chart of price, which means as the price goes down, interest rates go up. So I thought it would be good to kind of show where interest rates were over a long period of time. As you can see right now, this is where they are this month. This red, this last line on the chart, I hope everybody can see it where my, my little hand of the mouse is pointing. And you might, if you can see it, you will see that this is a month where interest rates have gone straight up, which means the price has gone straight down. And if you look at the month before January, interest rates actually went down. And there was the rally in the stock market. The interest rates call the shots. Remember, the interest rate market and the world debt market is many fold larger than worldwide equ equity markets, literally, generally by a factor of 20. That means there's at least 20 more dollars invested in debt than there is in equity, which tells you how the world puts its money to work. And right now, the world is selling bonds. Take a look at this. Let's go back as far as we can in this chart. We're all the way back to 1999. So I want people to understand in the context of what, since the year 2000, what has happened to interest rates? And we all know what's happened to the market. Basically over the last 23 years, except for last year, the interest rate market has gone lower in rates, higher in price. With the exception of course of 20, 2008, take a look, we had a big rally in price, which means why? Because we had the financial crisis and interest rates were cut to be able to manage the, uh, the financial crisis. But I think in the context of things, what we saw last year was a 20% correction essentially in the S&P 500. But look how much the bond market failed in, since, 19, um, since 2020. Look at this change. This is a secular change in interest rates. When you see a secular change like this over the last two years, but yet the stock market where the interest rates have gone up, but the stock market has also gone up, something is amiss. This is the backdrop of the world we live in today, where we are in a world of higher interest rates, higher inflation, but yet stock prices have remained basically steady. Let's take a quick look. Here's the S&P 500 over the same monthly period going back to the same time. The market has made a very modest correction in the stock market since this period. This is a monthly chart. But again, I'm gonna go back to the bond chart. Notice the difference. The bond market has made a huge correction, but the stock market has not. It's down relatively little given where interest rates have gone over the last two years. This is one of the reasons why people are predicting, some people, including at Morgan Stanley, is predicting 3,800 on the S&P by the end of the year. And I've heard others talking about 3,000 over the next two years. And I've heard other people literally go back and say that they feel the market could correct all the way back down to 2,000 eight, nine levels. In other words, that the stock markets believably 
could be cut in half. That is, those are things that when people say it, we don't want to hear that if we're long-term stock investors. But nonetheless, I can see by looking at a simple chart, why they would think this. Those things on a chart make some sense to me. And there is a reason to be able to say this is a possibility. I do feel it's remote. However, one thing for sure, when I see these kind of disparities over a long period of time, in this case, two years, something is wrong. Something is amiss with one of these markets. Either the debt market has it wrong or the stock market has it wrong. One of them is going to be proven correct. Generally, it's the bond market, mostly because the magnitude, again, of the bond market is so much more important and deep than the stock market.